All right, I guess we could start. So welcome to the webinar on the three must-have apps to transform QuickBooks into a powerful mid-market platform. So briefly about myself, my name is Jeff Siegel. I'm a CPA. I am the owner of Siegel Solutions. So we um, are a top 50 client accounting and advisory firm. I've been doing this for 20 years, providing world-class services and cutting edge solutions to help businesses grow and succeed. And we've been doing that using QuickBooks, QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online, and, and a bunch of apps through the years. Uh, have been consistently voted uh, top 100 QuickBooks Pro Advisor. This last year, I was the top Pro Advisor in the Appologist category. Uh, I'm a QuickBooks Solution Provider and the host of a podcast called Leaders Who Scale, where um, I interview entrepreneurs who are growing their business. You could find that on YouTube. So, but quickly before we get into the three apps, I just want to talk about the QuickBooks ecosystem. So QuickBooks has an ecosystem that has all these apps there. It's actually at apps.com where it, we can add apps and add-ons to QuickBooks to make it much more um, of what I would call an ERP-like solution. So apps that would uh, add customer management, commission management, invoicing, uh, better invoicing and inventory and business reporting, all kinds of apps. So a company doesn't, whether you're new to QuickBooks and you're worried that um, it may not do what you need it to do, or you think you've outgrown QuickBooks and you need to move to an expensive ERP, there may be apps, or there probably are apps, actually, that are in the App Center that will increase the functionality of, of QuickBooks. So again, apps.com. But for most businesses, regardless of their industry, I think there's three main functions that need to need, they need to have to run and manage their business. One is on reporting, uh, another on planning and budgeting, and lastly, relationship management. So I believe the three must-have apps, again, those three would be reporting, and I have Justin Hatch from Reach Reporting, um, planning and, and budgeting. I've got Christian Wildage, CEO of Plan Guru, and Results Software. Um, that is where we have our relationship management. I have Bob Lewis, who's the chief revenue officer. So real quickly, I'm gonna introduce them all. So Justin, reach reporting. Jeff, can I interrupt for a second? People yeah, are sure. asking, make your screen a little bit larger. Oh, well, I have a 52 inch screen and it's as large as it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I am sorry for that, but I have it on. It might be because your screen's so wide, Jeff. Like, it, if you move the presentation over to your like laptop screen, uh, I, I'm just guessing. I, I got no yeah, idea. I don't problem. have a laptop screen with me. I just have okay. a very large um, view. So let me see if I can. We'll That's the you don't need glasses other, screen. We'll be sharing each of our, you know, content from our own screen. So I think yeah. we're okay to move forward. So. I will send these out actually, the slide deck. So um, hopefully you'll, you'll have that. So sorry about that. I didn't realize those are gonna show up too small. Um, so real quickly with intros. So Justin, reach reporting. I know I can go to QuickBooks and I can print out reports, balance sheets, P&Ls, agings. I'm curious why you started reach and what does reach offer me that QuickBooks can't or doesn't? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm glad you asked that. So one of the things that when we first started is we kicked off in thinking we were going to be getting into the BI space back in 2015. And then I met this guy named Richard Ropa, and he introduced me to this other guy named Jeff Siegel. And as, as we were working together, what we realized was there were some things that the accounting audience desperately needed. And we said, look, we don't know anything about this audience. We don't claim to know anything about this audience. What we know is you guys are saying that there's a pain point. So we went and we, we sat down and I would, oh, Jeff, I don't know if you remember all those times I would like 
call you and bug you, just be like, bro, what do you think about this thing? I, I just added this feature. Tell me what you think about it. And, and I'm honest feedback. Like, yeah, and, and and I, you were you were so good about giving that. When I first so, started, I was like, oh, Justin, you need to add like, you know, KPIs and stuff in here. I know. You know? I know. Yeah. I know. So yeah. essentially what happened was we, we got into the space. We realized that there was this major problem. We realized that it can only be answered by these accountants of what exactly the pain point was. And that's when we started to really, really hone into the market because we just went to the audience. We just said, okay, now what? Now what are you missing? Now where's the pain mm-hmm. you're feeling? Because if we go and we just like invent all this magical stuff that's that we think is the solution, then we don't know. We, we could be way off base. Yeah, and so that's where that's kind of the genesis story of uh, of how we really really got into this. That's cool, and, and in a couple of in a little bit, we're gonna look, look at the product. I think you're gonna show us some of these things, which I think it's awesome. I've been like you said the early oh thanks man the early days it was really kind of scrappy and I was like I use it. I tried it. I, I don't think there's a better word. And scrappy was the word. Yeah, for real. Yeah. So, okay, cool. So, uh, Christian, Plan Guru, I, I think you mentioned you had work at IBM and corporate finance, right? And I think, was it your father that started the company? Tell me what Plan Guru yeah. or about yourself and why you're doing this. Because we, we can, I can go to QuickBooks and put a budget in and I, I could print reports for that. So what am I getting out of Plan Guru? So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of similarities in our stories, given also that Jeff's been asking me for functionality for uh, uh you know a, a decade here as well and and when i you know when i told my father who started the company that you and i were talking he's like oh you mean jeff siegel from back in the day so <laughs> jeff's been giving playing guru ideas since uh the early 2000s so uh but but yeah i mean i never intended to go into business with my father and he certainly didn't want to go into business with me uh, but I was at IBM uh, and, you know, had come from like a more of a financial services background, but, you know, living that budgeting and forecasting cadence at a, at a world-class organization, like it sort of brought home to me what I was like, oh, dad, I, I kind of, I get what you've been trying to do all these years with smaller businesses. And then I very much against this will quit my job, became the third employee and the rest. And then as I jokingly say, I, uh, ruined his uh, he he wanted to start a lifestyle business but then i ruined my life by quitting my job at ibm and being like we need this we need this now you know so jeff yeah. siegel needs this i need you know, it like, I, uh, I was the the excel route of budgeting and forecasting and and obviously we talk about quickbooks where we can put in a budget but we, it's tough to create one with formulas and things like that and um Reforecasting, so we're going to see our product. Well, that's the you know yeah. that's the real Rob is the forecasting becomes so much more valuable in the smaller business space, yeah. um, and uh, and that's just what's you know not in QuickBooks you know in any meaningful way. Great, thanks. And Bob, Bob Lewis. So I've known you for probably just as long as these other guys. Um, seen you at different entities, and now, like six plus months ago or so. Like, hey, Bob, just join results. I'm curious, A, why'd you join the team and what does results do for us? Yeah, Jeff, thank you. Yeah, it's been great to uh, work with you over the years. And uh, so I've been in this ecosystem now for 30 years and, uh, you know, started, I'm actually, I'm actually an accountant by education and my first, my first role uh, in the big, at the time, big six, dating myself there. But um since then, I've been helping build uh, relationships with software businesses and the accounting community and the SMB mid-market communities, um, you know, having worked at Intuit, where I had the pleasure to bring QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Enterprise into the Pro Advisor program when they were just launched you know, in, in, that, in that era, oh. in the early 2000s, uh, helped build uh, a big partner program at Concur as we were scaling up and uh, we were the, you know, really the only expense management uh, product on the block for a long time and and until we got acquired by SAP uh, and, and then have worked in, uh, in the apps in the QuickBooks ecosystem uh, since uh, having helped build 
partner programs and scale those up at bill.com. Uh, along that time, I, I got to know results too, and, and always had great respect for their product, the clients who needed that, and, uh, and Sam Saab, our, our CEO and founder, and, and Randy Johnston, our, our, uh, our CTO, who, uh, who, if any of you have gone to the accountant conferences, you've probably seen him speak and talk about technology, vision, and future. And, and so, uh, you know, recognizing the need with relationship management with QuickBooks uh, and these, these guys and, uh, and, and the capabilities of results in our, in our fantastic history was really compelling to bring, uh, you know, where, where I, uh, really add values building growth businesses. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge growth opportunity here. And, and so why, why results, uh, when QuickBooks, you can track your customers, um, you know, but what you, you know, QuickBooks is a wonderful accounting system and you can track your financial relationship with your customers, but there's so much more to, to keep track of your leads, your opportunities, your projects, uh, estimates, many, many capabilities, workflow and process that you can build in into, uh, into a solution like this that really goes so much further in helping you manage that ongoing relationship with your clients, your customers, and having all the people in the business on the same page. Is sales had a conversation and set expectations, service may be delivering that, and then support needs to follow up. Finance needs to know, hey, was this completed and built? So there's you know all these different players, got to keep them all on the same page. And frankly, we don't want them all in QuickBooks. Right. Please. Right. So, yeah. no, I, so yeah, I'm going to have you show your product first, but I, I will say all three of these products work with desktop and online. So, for some of these clients that are still on with our enterprise or not are online, these products all work with that. So, I, that's that's why I've used them for a number of years. And again, like Justin mentioned, I started with his product back in like 14 or 15, I think, when it first came out. It even had a whole different company name strategy or something like that i think yeah that that's was. the one all right yeah. cool nice all right so so bob i'm gonna have you share your screen and maybe you can talk about a little bit about results or a lot hopefully well i am sharing are we seeing uh my results yeah mm -hmm. okay yes. great so we enable companies to do more with results and uh, and our solution is uh, it's a CRM is a is an acronym that may be contact management or client relationship management. Effectively, our solution keeps track of all your relationships, whether those are clients, vendors, partners, channel relationships, uh, and, and and or even employees in our system. So it's quite powerful and flexible. And and the entire goal is to enable a business to be on the same page, managing and exceeding expectations with their, with their clients and, you know, really enabling results in that all, all digital work anywhere world we're all in today. So to give you a sense for some of the capabilities, so our, our dashboard here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly through some of this here. We don't, it's not really a, a demo session, but to give you a flavor, uh, this is an overview of our solution and all and, and, and a summary of of your your business as it relates to managing client relationships and sales. The the powerful capabilities here in a contact record. So this could be uh, a sales contact. It could be an existing client. It could be a vendor. And with each of them, you have a tremendous amount of information here on who they are and their information, but also a comprehensive view of all the aspects of the relationship that you have, whether that's a project, sales orders that have been created, invoices, payments, purchase orders, and any other subcontacts related to that, to that relationship. So, so um, Bob, real quick, I hate to interrupt, but we can't yeah. use sales orders in QuickBooks Online. Um, it's not a function right. built in. Are you saying, I think what you're saying is we can do it here and it's going to still, it'll track that and we'll have that activity probably from the invoice or the estimate in QuickBooks. Yeah, that, that Jeff, that's a great, that's a great uh, question because yes, we do have sales orders 
And, and while we integrate with both QuickBooks Desktop and QBO, some clients are looking at moving from desktop to QuickBooks Online. And if they need sales orders, that's, that's one of the feature areas that we have in results that we can enable that business to move forward, continue to do sales orders. And then, right, when that moves into an invoice, that'll sync into QuickBooks. So you'll still have a complete accounting picture and you'll still have all the capabilities to run your business. And so that's one example. There's other examples, pricing tiers, other, other capabilities and results that help clients moving from desktop to online. It's a great gap filler. One of the strategic reasons I think results is, is a great solution, uh, not just overall, but right now in the market with all that change that's coming. Um, so then, yeah, then there's, you know, the individual view. Hey, I need to see what are my priorities for the day, for the week, and how do I stay on top of them? So activities that you're tracking can show up in this nice uh, board view where, and I can grab and move them from one time to another. It's, it's quite powerful and, cap uh, and, and easy to, to keep me on track when I sign in each day. Uh, or a more comprehensive view of my projects. So in my projects, I can see which projects I have, what stage they're at, what are the next steps, who's the team, what, what needs to be done to move it forward. So it's great from a personal view of the projects I'm involved in or as a leader looking after all the projects, making sure my team's on track and we're delivering and exceeding those expectations. We've worked so hard to set and earn that right for the business. So really a difference maker in looking after the operation of your business, not just the contact relationship. So there's far more capability here uh, than, uh, than you might think of when you hear CRM. Or another example here, uh, with, our, uh, with our, our mobile view, you can see as a field service rep, what are my projects today? Where am I going? In this case, I've got an HVAC repair as my next visit. I can see where it is. I can click into that. I can see all of the capabilities I can view from my device while I'm on the road, start the job, track the time, take photos, record the before it was clean or it was a mess when I got there. This thing was broken. I fixed it. Here's a photo while I was doing the work. And hey, it's all clean. And we walked away all set so that, hey, when they call us later and say, uh, hey, there was some water, you know, there's some water in the HVAC room. Like, well, when we left, it was clear. But yeah, hey, we'll, we'll check it out if you need us to come back. The, um, and so you have all that information. You're empowering the team. And, and so this is a game changer and, and really connects the whole team to the process so you can deliver and exceed expectations. How, how easy is it to, to set up somebody wanting to get this going? And, and, and secondly, is there any specific industries that results would be ideal for? Well, I would say, you know, it, it it's it's quick to get started. Um, you're gonna wanna work with uh, your, your local appologist, you know, in this case, Jeff, our spokes model, who, uh, who helps, who helps clients see how it fits. Uh, he helps implement it with them. And, uh, and we do a lot to support him in that. Um, but yeah, generally there's, this is a, a, um, a tailored solution. So it's not a trial use product. It's let's understand your business and let's tailor it so that it works right how you need it to. And so you get a, you get a white glove experience. You get a solution that's going to do exactly what you need. And then we'll help train up your team uh, if you'd like them to, to learn uh, the new process. And, uh, and so it's, it's um, yeah, it, it, it requires a little bit of effort, but that payoff is so valuable um, when you're using it. Awesome. <clears throat> so, I mean, there's a lot more than what I showed. There's, there's literally all these capabilities here. So uh, in the basics, keeping track of all your activities and your contacts, doing work groups and managing documents and KPIs, or the whole pipeline effort, tracking your sales and leads and campaigns, quotes through sales and seeing your history with a customer. Uh, or on the business side, this is really more operations management 
whether it's keeping track of projects, doing invoicing, purchase orders, uh, or even defining specific workflow and processes. And I'll talk about that in just a sec. And then last uh, here, field services as another capability. When you have reps who are out in the field and with many integrations, QuickBooks, Outlook, Zapier to connect to many things, Calendly for scheduling meetings, there's text integration and uh, very coming very soon, have a tax for those that want to keep track of, of uh, uh, sales tax because we're doing invoicing and sales orders and giving estimates. So the concept is really to extend the value of QuickBooks so that you have those capabilities that you're considering, hey, am I outgrowing QuickBooks? I feel like I need more. Well, you actually don't need to go to an expensive, complicated mid-market solution. Most of the time, you add on with solutions like ours with Reach uh, you know, or uh, with Plan Guru for planning. And, and you've got the capabilities writing QuickBooks that you need. And so that's, that's our vision with results to expand the capabilities in these areas. Um, and, and so some of the things I didn't mention before, time billing, um, contacts portal. So if you have a portal you want your clients to access to see the status of, of the order, the process, you can they can log in, update their contact information, that type of thing. So, so, so Bob, real quick, also, I think you can export a lot of things, right? Excel, like a download. Which... Absolutely. We get when we talk about reach in a couple of minutes, it could actually pull that data in for reporting. Yeah, so we sync it all, we sync everything into QuickBooks. Yeah. So if the, the data you need is there, great. But if you want more data, let's say you want to see more, you know, lead view, pipeline view, and you want to use that in your reporting to do some forecasting, absolutely. You can export that, incorporate that into your forecasting. It's, uh, you know, enhances yeah. the data in your reporting as well. So here's just one client example is a larger client of ours has uh, 50 plus users. They make shades uh, for, for businesses. You may recognize some of these stores, uh, these retail locations. And, and what's amazing is that uh, with, uh, with their, they take orders through channel partners who effectively they use as, as an individual contact. They need to keep track of the sales, whether they made them direct, whether it went through a partner, all integrated and, and one view. And it's super hard to do without a tool like this, but we integrate with QuickBooks. They're running a, a significant business on QuickBooks plus results. And um, and so with integration to QuickBooks and Avitax, we're helping them meet their needs with you know, a global business with uh, with many large, large clients. You could see the green awning there. We're not uh, supposed to disclose that, that business, but that's one of those big ones that uh, sometimes you might see when you get your morning coffee. So um, anyway, with that, I will. Uh, well, thank you, Bob. No, I, I will keep you back. So, so I, didn't, I didn't mention this earlier real quick, is that if anyone does have questions, you don't have to wait to the end. I, everybody here said they would answer anything that popped up in the middle of a presentation. So I'm watching, and I think Laura's watching the question panel for us. So, so you know, Christian. Hey, I, I, Jeff, if I could just. Hey, you know, I, I did want to, before you get to me, you know, I wanted we're, to we're say something. About, what's that? We're at you now. Well, well so <laughs> I can imagine that there might be some people that are saying like, am I really going to get into making CRM recommendations that like knowing some of the people I know from the trade shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But as an accountant, you can't just be the accountant of the numbers. Like you need to be the accountant of all the numbers. And that includes leads. That includes what's in your pipeline. And very frequently customers come to us and they have ambitious forecasting objectives, but they don't have the data accessible to support those forecasting methodologies. So Again, I mean, like, again, what you've told me about your ability to take that stuff, dump it in Excel, push it into Plan Guru, push it into Reach. I mean, that that's, you know, where the, it's evolving, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, it's really valuable that on our end, the customers have things uh, like that, like yeah, results. Just as, a, as an advisor, uh, 
we need to know about these apps too, just to help our clients, like you just mentioned, whether it's in the planning side or any other part of the business, because it all impacts financials too. So it's one of, one of the pieces in the, in the grand puzzle of running a business. So, but guy, so you're on. Yeah, I'm on. I'm yes. on. So, uh, I'm I'm just going to kick it off with a couple slides from my uh, Play Guru University, uh, which is a six hour course we teach. You know that that talks about obviously how to use the product, and I'll show you a little product here at the end. But just I want to level set. You know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of jargon out there. FP&A, uh, CAS 2.0, all these things like. You know, and of course we need industry speak, uh, all industries do, but like in part of our education is just reducing this stuff to the practical components of, of what we're talking about, you know, and um, again, obviously my corporate finance background weighs heavily on my perspective. I admit that I'm sort of biased, but in an ideal world, um, that sort of next level or fractional CFO service um is a regular cycle. Okay. We, in July to September, we do our strategic planning. Then in the uh, end of the November, December, January, we set our budget for the next year. Uh, each month or on a daily basis, we come back around and measure our performance. Uh, again, we're measuring performance on a daily basis, but we're at least holding a monthly cadence with our clients to keep people accountable and keep people on top of things. And then finally, the last step in the monthly cadence is a, is a rolling forecast. We're going to re-forecast. Um, so it's these sort of forward-looking, you know, a lot of people hear the term CFO. To me, a CFO is really the chief future officer. And it's th this is, again, in an ideal larger organization, and, and larger can be a couple million in revenue, okay? I, I don't, don't want to get confused, but this is the ideal process. Um, now, what do I mean by a forecast? Okay. A forecast is an honest, sober, practical, tactical assessment about where we're headed. And it can be as simple as a 15 minute quick spin every month. Okay. Like it's not, you don't need to exhaust it. You go down the income statement. How's that look? Jeff does it with his clients. How does this look? How does revenue look? How does cost look? How does my balance sheet look? And then when you're done, you go to the top of the balance sheet and you look at cash and you say, okay, we're, we're okay this month. Hooray. And uh, again, it's again, I may be oversimplifying it, but it can be that simple and extremely, extremely valuable. It stirs up conversations that wouldn't happen otherwise. And when all of a sudden we're talking about what's going to happen instead of what happened, it naturally extracts recommendations from you who have a much wider perspective than your clients do because you see tons of businesses. So by going through the exercise of what's going to happen, all of a sudden you're having a whole different level of discussion and adding value. So it's about showing up. It's just about showing up to that meeting, having that discussion. It's also about being ready. When the client something, an awesome opportunity emerges or a really threatening risk emerges, you don't have to scramble to build some model. You got a model. You just spun it two weeks ago. Break it out and let's tackle this challenge or opportunity. Additionally, when you walk into the bank and it's transparent, like when your client walks into the bank with you and it's clear that this wasn't just a hoop that they jumped through to get a loan in an emergency situation and that you're their CFO and that this is something you do every month, completely changes the banker's perception of your business and the likelihood that their loan is going to get repaid. So again, having these pro putting these processes in place at your client is going to change their ability to be successful and stuff happens. And obviously you got to do it for your cur current year. We, we obviously recommend a rolling 12 month and a rolling 24 month forecast as well, but it's that, it's that next couple months that in reality is the most important thing. Strategic planning, again, I'm not going to read all these slides, but strategic planning generally becomes more important as the company gets bigger and there are more stakeholders that go, I want a bigger dividend. No, I want to grow the company. Like, you know, okay, <laughs> but again, those are good problems to have, but that's when strategic planning begins to add more value, unless obviously you're a growth oriented company. Uh, but then finally, you know, the budgeting process, you know, a, a budget is a comprehensive set of goals of what the organization hopes 
to achieve. Okay, they need to be aspirational, yet achievable. Okay, so it's, it's a fine line you straddle here during the budgeting process. Um, and people need to be involved in that budgeting process. As you get to a slightly larger organization that might have a sales and marketing manager, you need to involve those people in the budgeting process and hold them accountable. And guess what? When Jeff comes in every month, shows up at a meeting, asks people, what, hey, what happened last month? You, you said this was going to happen. When people know that meeting's coming, it changes their behavior every single day of every single week so, of every single month. So Christian, um, not to uh, cut you short. I want to know, uh, I'm using QuickBooks online. I want to know how do I use Plan Guru? How does it connect? What am I looking at? Because well, I think a lot of us hopefully know what a budget is, but you know, um, I think it's good to see the interaction between the two. Like if I could throw, interject yeah. what you're doing. Um, yeah, no problem. I love when I take your product and I connect it to QuickBooks and it sucks over all my accounts because there's too many budgets where the mapping doesn't even make sense. Someone has a budget with 20 accounts and QuickBooks has 100. And I love the, how the actuals come in too. And then I could make create a budget and a refocus. So I'd love to see or hear how how that works. Yeah. Your product. Yeah. Um, so you you guys can see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a plain guru scenario. Um, in this particular situation, we are dealing with a uh, someone who owns multiple locations of a mini golf, driving range, batting cage, restaurant, arcade type of thing. You can see there's a Tampa, Orlando, and Miami location. Uh, and then we have a consolidated view on top of that. You know, a lot of your clients will not need consolidations, but um, some will. As you can see uh, at the top of my nav here, though, I have three tabs. I have an actual tab where my current year actual results are. I have my budget tab, which is that archived budget. It's what we hope to achieve that we set at the beginning of the year. And then I have my forecast, which is that practical tactical assessment of where we're really headed. You know, when we double click on any account, it brings up what we call our method selector. Now, um, we weren't the most creative when we made this historical data. I apologize, this is man-made. Uh, historical data you'll kind of you'll kind of see that in a second here actually no these okay these numbers are a little off nice um but top half of the grid so we've selected percent of other accounts right top half of the grid shows you historically what this account has been as a percentage of something else in the bottom half of the grid we can just double click to take the average from above we can double click to take my 2022 averages or i can just Look at what it was. Full year last year was 2.91. I can just put in 2.91, copy that off to the right, and uh, set my forecasting method. So we give you not just tools for, you know, the, our joke is that if you remember that rotisserie chicken infomercial, they used to say set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. Like, so uh, that, that's uh, kind of one of our mottos here playing Guru for 85 to 90% of your accounts are going to be set it and forget it. And then for those other five to 10%, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that in a second. But for those set it and forget it accounts, we got growth rate, we got manual entry, we got historical trend and average to get those things up and running. Uh, when you get over to the balance sheet, we've got a lot more specialized forecasting methods like average days to collect, average days to pay, methods for prepaids, methods for accrued expenses, debt modeling tools. But the important thing that Jeff talked about, hit upon already, is we go out to QuickBooks, we automatically map your accounts Again, you can have a QuickBooks sample company up and running in five minutes. We automatically map every account to wherever it goes. And then you forecast every single account except for two, cash and retained earnings. Those are automatically computed. So as you adjust any other assumptions in the model, you know that your cash is going to be correct, your retained earnings is going to be correct, and your balance sheet is going to balance. And then we automatically solve the statement of cash flows for you as well. Where... Uh, this hits upon what Bob spoke about earlier is a lot of times for your most critical accounts, simply applying a growth rate is not going to get the job done, you know, and therefore we have to go down in the weeds and forecast. And very frequently people are importing pipeline detail into Plan Guru. I expect this many leads. I expect to quote this many. And so we're using this stuff, not just to report, but they were using this stuff to build drivers that are going to manipulate our forecast in the future. 
And then we're not just doing budget versus actuals on your financial statements. We're doing, we're, we're showing the revenue budget versus actuals. We're showing the unit sold budget versus actuals. And then we're showing the average price budget versus actuals for that complete story. Obviously, this is a really simple example, but unit sold versus price is as simple as it can get. But don't worry, we can model everything from complicated subscription models to defer modeling the deferred revenue on prepaid service contracts. Okay. You know, it, as geeky as you need to get. Uh, so yeah, that's our, and again, as you roll this forward each month, the actual results continue to roll forward and you can reforecast off of that. Yeah. I think uh, that's key to reforecast because, you know, if my cash is, is an actual, as of this date, I can reforecast what it's going to look like going forward. I'm not just pulling the budget number that I thought I was going to do when I set it up six months ago. So I think that's important. And, I, and the late, the integration with QuickBooks is key because it's pulling over, like you said, all the actuals on a regular basis and we can run reports off things. Yeah. And, and we can also, um, we can, uh, if you need it right now, you can ask me because it's like it's it's in production, but it's kind of hidden right now. Justin may understand some of those things, but uh, <laughs> we're, we're doing a really big overhaul of our imports. So you're going to actually be able to layer on two filters. You're going to be able to layer on a class filter and a location filter and pull a location within a class and then build up from there. Again, that's not too common. The business advisors get it. And we got a lot of companies internally getting after that stuff. Um, but again, you can you can handle that type of stuff as well. Cool. So. Well, thank you, Christian. Um, no, I, I I love love the product. Like you said, I've been using it since early two thousand something. At some point, I, I dealt with it. Yeah, I, we, many <laughs> many Jeff Siegel ideas are in Planger yeah, today. Like, where's the where's the payroll assumptions and things like that? And so, um, yeah, yeah, I've seen it over the years. Cool. I want to jump to Justin because I think at the end of the day, you know, we've got our business management system with Bob. We've got our planning with Christian and Plan Guru, and now we get to the reporting, right? That's where the, the rubber hits the road. What are we looking at? Whether it's dashboards, whether it's um, financial reports, I think reach reporting is cool. I love it. Like I said at the beginning, I was a little, you know, scrappy, and I was like, ah, so many other good things. Hey, but you stuck with us, and uh, you did. were you were with us when we were uh, the, you know, the the. <laughs> trouble software that was coming that you couldn't really pronounce our name and then right. uh and we kind of figured it out uh as as time went on cool i love it love I've it got many i've got many of those too yep yeah so go, yeah. yeah bring bring us home on this stuff justin Joe. so yeah. so the thing about so yeah this is where it's this is where it's so fun and this is this is why i find so much passion in this is because there are so many stories from my personal life where I have needed the information and I, I didn't know where to go. I remember, I, I vividly remember, I was 21 years old. I remember sitting with my dad's accountant and he offered to do our corporate, corporate if you call it that, our taxes for the year. And he was like, hey, so do you have I just need to like get this into QuickBooks. And I, I thought I didn't really know what QuickBooks was for. I didn't know what the purpose, of, I mean, I was just a kid and that poor, poor accountant, but the time that he spent to try to help me understand was invaluable. I'm sure I contributed to some of his gray hairs, but what was interesting is over time we realized, I realized certainly that it's all about communication. It's all about having the message. And if I have somebody like Jeff sitting over my shoulder and saying, oh yeah, this means this. So just so you have a little bit of context here. And then I you know, go on to the next thing and I have somebody else that comes and says, yeah, oh yeah, that means that. And they can explain those little things so that I can understand. I'm so much more of a force as I'm trying to guide my company. I had an interesting experience and I, I love to tell this anecdote, even though uh, I've told it lots of times, but I, I was, I was on the V I was a VP uh, uh, for a company in oil and gas and on our board, on our board of directors was a gentleman that was the former CFO of NASA. This guy is just, I mean, just phenomenal. I mean, he, he, 
he like studied at Wharton. He was, he's the only person I know that went to boarding school, like legit, like school for boys, see your parents twice a year. He the guy was brilliant. And as I was explaining, those are, those are, those are intense meetings to be in. And sometimes you're a little bit nervous. And as, so as I was, as I was talking and I was presenting, he held up his hand. He said, Justin, Justin, we're a bunch of old guys here. Can you just dumb it down? First of all, he wasn't old. Second of all, he he was so smart. But what I learned was, but, but he was a rocket science too. I mean, oh my! Like, and the guy was just <laughs> phenomenal. Seriously, and and oh yeah, there's there's more to that. But but what I learned was this isn't about whether they can understand the data theoretically. This is about communicating as effectively and efficiently as possible. And as soon as I realized that with reach everything changed because then it wasn't about necessarily enabling people to see their balance sheet, but it was about showing them their balance sheet in pieces in a, what I call a milk before meat format and then assembled. So we can start with that. We can start with the, uh, and this one's a bit overwhelming because it's showing a whole bunch of our demo dashboards, but we can, you can start with, looking at something rather than looking at it in this more hardcore model, which, which is amazing for accountants because they understand they cut their teeth here. But when it goes to the business owner, the business owner's like, Hey, look, can you just make it so that we can understand? And, and so, so it's interesting. And as we started to realize that, as we started to really internalize that we started to, to build on that process. So every report REACH provides is providing the same metric in two or three different ways. So we can see it in different ways. Hey, are you a, are you more of like a read it in text kind of person? Okay, here it is in text. Are you more of a, a uh, visual person? You want to see the trajectory? Great. Here's, a, here's a, a visual trajectory. So you're able to communicate with your clients. That we found as we're, we were dealing with G, Jeff, with you, as we were dealing with, with Richard Ropa, as we were dealing with Beth Melcher. I mean, this, these are the early days, you know. So, so as we were having those conversations, we realized that one of the biggest things is our clients weren't really valuing their accountants, their advisor, because they couldn't understand what they were providing. And the advisor's hands were tied because they were either providing it from one of two places, Dell, QuickBooks. And, and, and you just, even now, you're just, you're, your hand's tied behind your back. I saw a billboard on the freeway, actually just north of here. And it said, spreadsheets are dead. The future is here. It's all about, I don't know, whatever, something else. <laughs> and I went to our accountants and I said, talk to me. Are you, is this what you're feeling? Is this what you're thinking? Are spreadsheets dead? And they said, who told you that? No, like they, they started, you know, grabbing their torches and pitchforks, like, like they wanted to go like, you know, cause some mayhem. But, but it occurred to me that, that, that we may be communicating to the business owner and they may be feeling like, hey, let's get rid of the spreadsheet. But, the, but when it comes right down to it, if we're building stuff, we need those at our fingertips. We need to be able to create content that is simple, but communicates. It has to communicate. The funny thing is, once we start to communicate, and this is why it's so, the story is so critical. Once we start to communicate effectively, the client now values us as the accountant, not reach, values the accountant, their advisor more because they understand them. They understand what's happening. And then they're able to take the information that they get from results software. They're able to take their information they get from, from Plan Guru. They're able to bring it in and make it super digestible. If I want to get hardcore and I want to see the deep hardcore stuff, great, go to the bottom of the report. And you can see all the crazy stuff down here at the bottom. But if you want to just get a skim look at this, you can come in and see how things are going just at a glance. Well, I love the reports yeah, too. That's what changed it. That's what changed everything. I, I was going to say, I love the reports too, because I have some clients where the PL balance sheet is just too much on it. Even if I collapse it, it doesn't look, it's too summarized. If I expand it, it's too much. But Reach lets me move some accounts around, merge them in different ways. It's all going to change the names. You know, if I 
I want them. Oh. Like I have one now I'm working on. They want accounts receivable and notes receivable as one number. And it's like, well, it's, I thought for sure numbers. because of that feature yeah. that you asked me for, I thought for sure we were going to be indicted in the next WorldCom <laughs> Flash, like like Enron scandal. I thought for sure, but it, you weren't alone. There was a hundred accountants that were saying, "Yes, desperately, we need this." Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I'm working on one now. It's pretty complicated, and I've got to move all these account accounts around. The other thing I love about your product is the ability to create reports that include P and L data, balance sheet data, and maybe other non financial data. We were just talking about this the other day where I'm doing one that has stock and then the current stock prices and you connect to Google Sheets. So I could pull in current stock prices and have reports yeah, that are indeed. real time, essentially. Yeah, yeah that's, just, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Uh, the, the stuff you can do with those integrations, because ultimately where the rubber hits the road is not me necessarily just looking at my expenses but it's looking at my expenses in relation to other things. Like for example, if I just drop a nuke on somebody and I'm like, hey, your net profit last month was 32,000. Okay, that's great. Is that good? Is that good? That's good, right? That's good? That's good. Well, who knows? It, it may be good, but let's look at it over time. Let's, let's pull it up in, a, in some kind of chart. If we can see, if we can see, let's see if we can find a good example just on this report. Uh, if we can see that, okay, yeah, let's say, you know, this was, we're 32,000 and then we're trending up and to the right. Hey, I love that. But if we looked at that same report and it was plummeting towards the earth and last, the month prior was 42,000, the month prior was 58,000. And all of a sudden we now have context. Now it's like, oh, this looks like it may not be a good thing. And then all of a sudden, as the advisor, and this is the part I love, we, Christian was talking about that six-hour course that they teach on. Well, we do one as, as well. And I love that course because I can spend almost a full hour talking about watching the micro expressions that happen right here and understanding our client, really listening to them to see, are they grasping this? Is this, is this making sense? What questions to ask, how to ask those questions? Because ultimately, it's all about communication. They have to see and understand because they're the ones that are sitting there in the cockpit. They're the ones that are sitting there uh, with, the, uh, with, with the stick, I think is what they call it in a plane, the stick in their hand, and they're, they're able to pull the plane up or, or down or whatever. So, so we have to communicate that as effectively as possible. And then we, as the accountants, become so much more valued. Yep, valued. Yep. Because now they have never had a, a, an advisor that can communicate to them in that level. And they're like, who is this person? I've never, I've never been able to understand exactly what's happening there. I had a, I had a COO who was my boss at a, at a prior company that I'll, I'll not name. And that guy had no idea of the difference between profit and revenue. No, no idea. He was sure they were the same thing. And, mm -hmm. and he argued it to the death because, you know, I was, I was his uh, subordinate. So I, what, what the heck could I know? And, uh, and he was sure that, that, that they were the exact same thing. And it, if we'd had a tool like this where we could say, hey, look, let's, let's just explore the difference. Let's really delve into it to try to understand it. Then we can watch our clients as they're seeing these things, make those quick changes as, as needed. And then you're going back next month with your, to your client and they're like, what, how did you know that I was really, I didn't understand the difference between profit and rent, whatever. So yeah. whatever, whatever it is. The, the another oh, thing. Oh, I'll go ahead, Christian. Sorry. Yep. I mean, another thing I really like about reach, you know, and, you know, mm -hmm. Dustin and I are working on getting our stuff to talk together. <laughs> so we'll get there soon. We'll but, get uh, there. We'll get there. The, the uh, I mean, specifically for all, all you know, again, I, I, I tend to talk a little bit more about the larger businesses, but the thing that's awesome about reach is, um, I mean, like Jeff already talked about how intersheet you have a lot of flexibility, like move things around, add things together, or like, you know, <laughs> maybe do some shade and no, I'm just joking, but, uh, uh but, uh, it's also like each dashboard is a is a perfect mechanism for 
controlling visualizations to exactly who you want to see them. You know, so like you might just have this massive pile of data in QuickBooks and you don't want to, you want to give a, a, a manager access to the information that pertains to them. And, and some of that's financial and some of that's out of the, and some of that's out of the, out of CRM, out of results. And you've got data from all these different places and, and you can load it all into reach, but then very strategically create a dashboard that's for one very specific person and not have to worry about them, like somehow clicking somewhere else and seeing the whole thing totally. you know, or something like. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and you can that's communicate. Why, yeah, they make, uh, such a good, you know, fit. Like I just said that I get yeah. sad when I think about what our products are going to do together here, certainly because as, as much as, know. as much as we love the CEOs we work with, they got their egos and they're not going to say that, Hey, I don't understand this. They're they're They may not know. So it, it becomes our responsibility, which is why I spent an hour on that subject, which it becomes our responsibility to communicate the information just in an ultra effective way, but so easily, you know, honest, honestly, one of the things that I, really worried about is that you are operating you as the accountants were operating with your hands tied behind your back and that really worried us we wanted to create something where where you had just about every tool at your fingertips so if you want to pull in results data great you want to pull in data that's just keyed in at some at some office somewhere they're keying in the number of hygienist hours that were worked last month great you want to key in the number of parking stalls you have fantastic but you can key in this information and going back to that spreadsheet comment I had made earlier, you can do it in an environment where we're, we're already familiar with this. We can come in, we can add a bunch of rows, we can add a bunch of columns, we can pull in right away. We'll be able to pull in the, uh, the budgeting forecasting data uh, from, from uh, Plan Guru. And, and others, and you'll you'll have that information at your fingertips so you can really, really hone in for what your client's needing, but we're doing it with tools that we already know how to use. We're yeah. not having to play these stupid games. I love it. I think, uh, you know, as I think about this, Justin and, and Christian, seeing your, uh, your, your uh, presentation as well, I think about all the value for these businesses that are, you know, the business owners mm -hmm. and the accountants who are with us today trying to unlock that next wave of growth. So what is it you see, you know, moving there from and to, you know, what, what, is, what are the advantages they really are seeing in their business to kind of sum it up after investing the time and, you know, a little bit of resource to uh, add tools like this to their business? Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic question. And, and it's, it really, I mean, obviously these come on a case by case basis, but where we're, we've been very fortunate is we've been able to see uh, north of 10,000 companies now that, that have drawn data out of reach. And so we're able to watch them as they, as they grow and benefit. What's cool is we can see how many of them use reports like this one. This is what I call a highly sensational report. Uh, we have other reports where they're much, much more minimalist. We have targeted reports specific to the specific needs of your industry. You can get a, uh, this demo, uh, some of these demo reports are a little old, but you can get reports that are very, very minimal. What's interesting is as that communication process takes place, we nurture our, and, and we certainly teach this as often as possible, the attempt to try to nurture people into, into growing with their advisor. The advisors are often willing to offer more of their services. The problem is they can't do it for free. And so they are able to now build reports on a tiered level. They can have a bronze, a silver, and a gold report. And the gold report is 2,500 bucks a month. And, and frankly, being in the industry, we are astonished by how much people are charging for reports. We have people that are charging in the multiple tens of thousands a month for these reports. It's insane as we're watching yeah. this. I, I so know. it enables people to be so much more effective in what they're communicating, but also to provide something that's very, very specific to specific needs. Yeah. I just want to say as an advisor, it's so simple to A, connect a QBO, pull in the data within minutes, and then you've got a, a um, catalog of templates 
like you, we could see them right here. And typically what I'll do is I'll open up one and the data is right there, right out of QuickBooks. And I'll go, eh, maybe I'll let me try another one. So I'm sitting there adding all these things until I get to the right one. It's probably 90% there. And then I can go in and change it, right? And maybe I don't like the image um, on the front. And I grab totally. from a client. I can get a client image right off their website. And it's just so quick to do. And again, we can make real complicated ones that take time. And But once it's done, it's a template. Every month, it's the same. It's going to pull the data. It on automatically rolls to the next month so we're not worrying about dates and things like that um right I, right I and the rubber hits the road and I, and I can't i can't stress this enough the rubber hits the road when you have the results data and the plan guru data and the quickbooks data and whatever else and the the data that this is uh, the office managers keying in every month you have the data that's that's data you might only know about a specific part of the industry. You have the formulas you can build. That's really where the rubber hits the road because the the client is desperate for this information, mm -hmm. whether they will tell you or not. They're desperate for it, and they don't have it as, as almost as a general rule. They don't have it, which is why they'll go to the Power BI tools and spend obscene mm -hmm. amounts of money to try to get that information, and then they end up. Uh, kicking against the proverbial pricks and and not getting it then either they really really lean on their advisor to provide that intel so so just i mean just to uh you know like I, you know i'm 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 more of that mindset that looks at that big long p l with all the little variances and i'm like what, what's your problem with this this, this is perfect everything's <laughs> right here you know like so i come from that world uh, like so you can have that too, though. You yeah, no, nice, no, exactly. Yeah. Well, that, and that's what I'm going to get to. I mean, like again, uh, you know, we're, we haven't been talking about partnering for months because of all these these things here, these pretty looking things here. I mean, just from a dashboarding perspective, like again, you know, putting this thing next to this thing next to this thing, it, it's about as easy as you could possibly imagine. You know, uh, it, it, you know, it's kind of like what one of my employees said, like, this is the thing we've been, you know, <laughs> th th dreaming of for years. I'm like, oh, perfect. Like, but uh, it's so, again, on the geeky, the heavy stuff, I mean, as much as he's obscuring it, they're just as good at that shit. I don't know why anyone would need Power BI. Like, yeah. you know, like, so. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up because it's coming up on the hour, but. I think with these three apps that we've just seen, I mean, you just, you're so close to almost an ERP system, right? Because even, you know, I won't mention names, the big guys of the world, they don't have reports like this. They're, they're going to have the generic, you know, P&L balance sheet. They, they can't do this. Um, and even the planning on any of those products, they, there's add-ons for those. So I think it, you were pretty much at that level with these apps and there are many more apps people go to the app center so you know inventory and other things but i wanted to put up i want to thank the three of you bob christian and justin for today i'm going to try to share your um contact information let's go back to again it's probably going to be too wide but we'll see if we can do this right here we've got emails i and if anyone has any questions they could throw them in the uh, questions, I don't see any now, but it sounds like everyone explained their product really well, and there's no questions, but um, I learned a lot. I've used all the products, and I still learn more stuff, so I think it, it's great. The that's that's, that's the fun part about software is, is you, can just keep, you can just keep adding those little things as, as they come along. Yeah, and yeah, I will say this. Great gap and fun. It was a good session. Hope value with all the attendees. It's a pleasure being here with you all. And I will say that the, these products here, um, the support is awesome. Like I know with with results, um, Sam, the developer, and 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 Bob. Like if I have a feature that maybe I'm asking, and they they may already be working on it, or they write it down and think about putting it in. It's pretty fast. Um, Christian, he's been updating his product all the time so and every time i ask something he's like oh it's in the works and justin reach just keeps coming up with more stuff and i and they send i get the newsletter and there's always a new feature it seems so you know it's awesome so i appreciate you it's all. good it gives us something to talk about yeah absolutely so I, I'll, I'll end the session we've got some great comments it's they love the session thank you
Um, you guys are great. And uh, I hope I hope to do more sessions with other vendors. But these three are kind of the must-haves for me. And, and I use all of them. So, again, thank you all. And uh, I appreciate everybody for attending. Everyone has the um, contact information. I hope you reach out. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank Jeff. you. Thank you. Bye. Hey, see you. Bye, everybody. Bye.